they don't think of, oh, well, yeah, Buddha followed all those moral principles, so I should too. The thought never even enters their mind. Where does this philosophy come from? What kind of person gave it? What kind of society did they live in? What were their principles? What was the example they set? They don't even think of that stuff. It's just that I don't have to follow any rules. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's go for it. Huh? So this nonsense philosophy, this has been the cause of the degradation of the whole human society. Now, why does Krishna set up this big play? Well, because it's Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is to teach the living entities that you cannot enjoy in this material world. There's no, no pleasure, no safety, no security, no honesty, no uh, wisdom, uh, no purity in this material world. There might be, in other yugas, some semblance of a civilized life. But in Kali Yuga, all pretenses are cast aside, and the real thing comes out, we're just a bunch of dogs and cats. Uh, go for the gusto, you know. That's, that's the nature of human uh, character because we're in these bodies, and these bodies are basically animals. So if we follow the senses, if we follow the mind, then we will become degraded. So there has to be some higher principles. There has to be some um, justification or motivation for following higher moral principles. And that can only come from worship of God. Hmm? As soon as we eliminate God, whether it's by Maya body philosophy or material science, then we're right back in animal life where the only justification for any, any activity is the senses. You can't have it both ways. It doesn't work. Uh, it's either we're following the senses or we're following the spirit. Uh, you can't have it both. Now, actually, in Vedic society, uh, Vedic society makes it possible to transition gracefully from the life of the senses to the life of the spirit by engaging our sensual activities in devotional service. And this is the wonderfully unique uh, aspect of Vedic philosophy that Western religion has never figured out. Uh, Western re religion, there are moral rules. But the moral justification for having those rules is that, you know, I told you so. <laughs> there's no real, you know, no real, there's no, I should say, elegant philosophical reason why we should follow moral rules. You know, if you don't, if you don't follow this rule, God will punish you. Well, great, you know. But then if the belief in God becomes weakened, then there's, nobody's going to follow the rules. And today, nobody does follow those rules. Uh, the cheating, lying, stealing, lust, uh, even killing, and, and you know, state-justified wars and so on, is all, all very much accepted in today's world. And nobody really believes that God is going to punish them for anything, because uh, they don't see it happening. Out of sight, out of mind. They don't believe that there are areas of existence that they cannot see. Please sit properly. Thank you. So what we have to deal with in today's world is really a bunch of people who are acting like animals, just following their senses and justifying all their activities by uh, sensory means, that we're going to increase our profit, we're going to increase our power, we're going to increase our enjoyment. Uh, and this nonsense enjoyment is actually just sinful activities that lead them into lower and lower and lower consciousness, where they become the slave of their mind and senses. Uh, and this is misery. It's misery. Because you may enjoy for five minutes nice sense gratification, and then for days afterwards you're, you know, depleted and drained. And, uh, this is called, in, in psychology, it's called anhedonia. That after a person uh, experiences a great deal of sense pleasure, then afterwards they are devoid of the energy to enjoy, 
and they can't enjoy and they're miserable. So this is life. This is karma, dude. Huh? Wake up. This is karma. You enjoy the senses and then afterwards you suffer. This is why Krishna says in the mode of passion automatically leads to suffering. The mode of goodness, when we control and regulate the senses, that leads to happiness. You know, and these things are eternal truths. You know, you, no matter how much wishful thinking you want to indulge in, you can't counteract that. You can't counteract Krishna's teachings. So Krishna comes in, in Dvapara Yuga to display his original pastimes. And then he creates the situation in Kali Yuga to show what happens if we don't follow those instructions. Uh, then Lord Chaitanya comes along and says, here's the solution, chant the holy name. Uh, so if we follow those instructions, and we also have a little bit of experience in this life, in this world, then we know that these things are true. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of propaganda against Krishna's teaching. So this is also Krishna's arrangement. It forces us to make the choice. We cannot become self-realized simply by being swept along by the current of uh, human affairs around us. The environment is not going to help us become self-realized. If anything, well, how many devotees, huh? In fact, everybody that I can think of here, just about, they became a devotee out of a situation where everyone opposed them. Isn't it? So many people in your life, the people you're related to, huh? you, you realize this knowledge and you go, oh boy, this is the truth, I have to follow this. And everybody else around you is going, no, no, you're just dreaming, you know, this is crazy. Life is really about enjoying the senses. See, they're still, they're under the whammy. <laughs> they're still believing in this Mayavadi philosophy. See, they're actually Mayavadis. Try to understand. Because if you, if you could actually, if you could actually engage them in an intelligent conversation which, about their beliefs, which most of the time you can't. But even if you could, if you dug down to the bottom, you would generally find at the, at the very uh, core of their belief is I don't have to do what anybody else says because there really is no God or I'm God or some nonsense like this. See? If you were to actually engage them and argue with them and get down to the truth, you would find that they have this nonsense lie embedded in their consciousness at some very deep level. So we're actually surrounded by Maya bodies. When, when we sing Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarane, uh, that he's preaching in the Western countries, Paschatya Desha, which are full of Maya bodies, uh, Shunyavadi, and Nirvishesha, Buddhists, nihilists. Ah, nothing matters. Uh, we're all going to die anyway, so you might as well just do whatever you want. The people actually think like this, although usually unconsciously. Uh, it becomes an assumption, and then so many consequent thoughts are built on that. See, So this very dangerous philosophy is actually all around us. And at every step, we're coming into contact with people who hold this philosophy or the consequences of this philosophy as uh, built into the modern system and the modern uh, activities and all that. So we have to be very, very cognizant of this and at every step make a deliberate conscious choice to follow Krishna's philosophy, Krishna's knowledge, you see. And if we do that, then actually at every step we become more and more elevated, more and more purified. You see, but this requires a constant awareness, constant alertness of the actual situation. You know, if we just go along with the herd, then we're going to uh, 
we're going to go into materialism by association. Nobody's going to help us become a devotee. We have to make that choice all on our own, individually, each and every one of us. It's not like you can simply be swept along with the herd by association. We don't have a big, a big uh, association. And even if it was possible, even if it were possible, then that would make very weak devotees. And as soon as they're separated from the association, they fall down. No, it's better if we have very strong devotees who can be independent and not lose their faith and not lose their practices. Uh, that's better. So when these tests come, and they always will come, we should welcome them because they're going to make us stronger. Uh, they, they give us the opportunity to choose. Do I want Krishna or Maya? 